I mean, I, I do love your picture of this free and open and generous archaeology, but actually archaeologists can be very, very mean. A kind of classical guru that we're probably going to have to cover at some point. We probably already should have. Graham Hancock. He wrote a book, Fingerprints of the Gods, which I read when a young, impressionable teen. And he's written other books, which are about Atlantis. And his basic thing is there are unknown ancient civilizations that are recorded in archaeological records and, you know, megalithic structures that the archaeological establishment, big archaeology, archaeology is refusing to acknowledge there's a conspiracy of silence and he's not saying it's aliens he mainly implies it's a race of white-skinned technologically advanced people who existed in in the past and the level of technological sophistication not entirely clear but like a lot more than hunter galleries right so an ancient civilization which is attested to in various monuments and documents from historical sources that the archaeological establishment refuses to acknowledge. And Graham Hancock is a favored source of Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, you know, describes him in glowing terms that he usually reserves for Alex Jones or, <laughs> or other such yep. figures, right? So he's been, I think he's been on Rogan's show 12 times. Or maybe, yeah. maybe it's eight times over 12 years or something like that. But it's a lot of appearances, right? Most recently, Joe invited Graham Hancock and a science man, Flint Dibble, an actual archaeologist, to come before Great Joe and present their evidence in the form of PowerPoint presentations. And in front of him, they will debate this issue and Great Joe will to help to decide which science man has better <laughs> idea. Um, so this is, this is what happened recently. And Flint Dibble said, agreed to come on. So we'll interview him about his experience. He did a fantastic job and he looked like everybody's kind of stereotype of an academic archaeologist. He kind of looked like Indiana Jones um, <laughs> in the way that he dressed up. So that was also entertaining. But he presented the science. You know, he was trying to be responsible, but also critical about what we do and do not know. But Graham Hancock, so his strategy, yes, he did talk about the evidence. He did show, you know, various photos and various sites that he thinks are very impressive. But one of his presentations, because they each give like kind of two presentations, but the second of Graham Hancock's presentation was introduced like this. I want to address, Flint, the way that uh, you um, dealt with the media about my work. Um, and I'm going to show a little PowerPoint presentation here and we'll talk it through. Um, well, we know that it's very painful to be burnt at the stake. Um, and heretics were burnt at the stake until relatively recently. And, and, and there's Galileo brought before the Inquisition for heresy. Um, and here we have Flint Dibble, um, who, sorry if I'm being direct, Flint, but you do recently appear to have set yourself up as a sort of modern Inquisition to um, investigate and test uh, whether uh, output actually uh, fits into what is regarded as acceptable thought by the mainstream. So I noticed your attack on the um, Homo, Homo Naledi uh, controversy uh, on your YouTube channel. Uh, and that concerns the work of uh, Lee Berger, who's an explorer in residence with uh, National Geographic. Um, he was really too big a target for you to bring down Flint. But uh, this guy, my friend Danny Hillman, Natawajaja, uh, he, he wasn't uh, such a big target for you to bring down. Uh, and you presented this, um, this video on your YouTube channel where you refer to it as a pyramid scheme, which is an insult uh, in itself. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity just to play a little clip from um, Flint's YouTube channel, if that's all right with you, Flint. Did you detect any gurusms? It's almost a prerequisite, isn't it? You've got to compare yourself to Galileo and <laughs> criticism as being like the Spanish Inquisition. I think this is a masterclass in grievance mongering. 
right? He's essentially going to give a presentation about his grievances. And he, you can hear him being like, you tried to take down my friend Flint, but you couldn't quite manage, right? But then you went after a weaker guy. Like, he's very worked up. He's very upset. And just to note as well, Graham Hancock had a Netflix series. He has Rogan appearances. He has best-selling books. Flint Dibble is a guy with a YouTube channel who is, you know, critical of alternative history, but he's essentially an archaeologist popularizing science. And Mm. he does not have the same profile as Graham Hancock. So this is Hancock, like, complaining at somebody with much less reach than him. But because he's more substantial, he does get coverage in, you know, like... uh, newspapers and stuff so this is why it rankles yeah, Hancock, yeah. It, right? it, it's very much like jordan peterson he's got so much pull so much of a profile but loves to present himself as um the david in a, a fight against a goliath even when the goliath is something like the ontario psychologist board yeah so let's hear a little bit more of this grievance mongering yeah now you um you very 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 smart that you brought on a couple of indonesian um speakers to join your assassination of the work of danny hillman natuajaja um because dr luffy yondri excavated the site of gunung padang he did major excavations there indeed so indeed so and and there's a conflict of interest with between him uh, that's um at the at the bottom there Uh, there's a conflict of interest between him and danny regarding gunung padang and work done in gunung padang but i'm more interested in the way that you guys present this and the mockery that's involved in it let's just play that little clip Uh, he plays a clip of them talking about his theory and then making some disparaging comments and kind of laughing and this Mm. greatly upsets joe right that they would laugh at graham's which is what graham wanted to show right it's not about the argument it's that they would laugh at his i know uh, i'm I'm just talking about atlantis and alien civilizations how dare you (laughs) how dare you sir no no hancock would be very upset about that because he doesn't say they're aliens Oh, right. I'm sorry, He's, I misspoke. I meant to say ancient. Ancient. So yeah, ancient. they're an ancient race of peel skin. And so uh, this will come up as well. But that already is giving, you know, a taste of the grievance that this whole encounter was littered with. But one more clip, Matt, that, that kind of makes it clear. Here we have uh, the Guardian. Well, there's Bill Farley on the left. He's strongly, wet- strongly recommending that Flint's interview the one I've just shown a clip from, be watched. Uh, there's Bill Farley saying it was not worthy of publication. This is the article that Danny Danny Hillman and his team published a peer-reviewed article on this. It went through a year of peer review before it was published until Flint and his colleagues began to put pressure on in the media. Uh, here's the claim being rubbished by Dibble and others. Um, they point out that Natwajid provided no evidence that buried material was made by humans. Actually, they did uh, in Danny's... In Danny's uh, uh, estimation, the what the remote sensing shows is rock structures that have been cut and shaped and moved into place by, by human beings. Um, and um, the net result uh, is, uh, of all this pressure, was that Archaeological, Pros- Pr- Archaeological Prospection, the journal that published the paper, came under such huge pressure, there was such a huge amount of media fuss about this, and I do think actually that all of that was caused, I think poor Danny suffered because his um, findings were featured in my show. I think the, 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 the reaction of archaeology to my show was probably why Danny got targeted. But at the end of the day, uh, the Witchfinder General worked out and uh, the piece was retracted, causing massive humiliation for Danny and his team. Now, what Danny and his team asked for was that criticisms be published alongside the article, but that the article not be retracted. And that seems to me to be fair enough. Um, Flint and his colleagues have uh, really created a huge fuss in the media about me. And this is just a small example. Satan loves Graham Hancock the most. But wait a minute. Not me. Right. So, Chris, how much time did they spend on just litigating his... Um, a lot group. of time, probably about uh, in that particular presentation, I think it was around about 15, 20 minutes, but it's peppered throughout the whole thing. It might even be longer than that. I mean, it's a over three hour 
episode. It might even be four hours. I want to address, Flint, the way that uh, you dealt with the media about my work. Flint and his colleagues have uh, really created a huge fuss in the media about me. I want to complete what I was what I was saying, which is the the influence that Flint and his colleagues have on, on media and culture. Perhaps we'll do that next, but I would just love to just complete this little point that yes. I want to make here, which is the influence of Flint and his colleagues on media and culture. Yeah, they spent a lot of time on this particular thing, litigating it. And it, it gave me flashbacks at time, Matt, to Eric Weinstein interacting with Mick West, yeah, you know, yeah. on behalf of the UFO community. Well, it's giving me flashbacks of Arrested Development and the uh, the magicians uh, getting together and saying, we demand to be taken seriously. But it is, it is a ploy that, that works, at least on people like Rogan, hey, where you can be quite ridiculous, you can be quite absurd, make these um, vague but really quite silly claims like Eric Weinstein does, like this guy does about Atlantis. And when a sober professional tries to set you straight, you very quickly get on your high horse and basically say, these people have the worst motivations. What are they hiding that they're being so defensive and attacking me and it, it just shifts the evaluation from one about the evidence to one about character and personalities and who you like more what was the phrase that eric pointed out to mick where he said you know like mick was making a thing about exercising his mental muscles and then oh, eric yeah. interpreted it as like yeah, non-metaphorical flexing. flexing yeah right yes flexing his so muscles you, yeah you remember that, right? You remember that bad faith interpretation? Now, Matt, listen to this. Flint, do you, do you believe that there's such a thing? You know, we've all heard the word big pharma. Do you think there's such a thing as big archaeology? No. Oh, how odd. Um, because here you are, Flint Dibble, January 23rd, January 23rd, uh, this is... 2023. It's scare quotes. It's sar sarcasm. The reality is we live in a period where we're seeing an increased distrust of scholars and scientists. Yes. As an archaeologist, I think we have to respond by engaging with the public. And we do. In many ways, the reach of big archaeology is way beyond that of Graham Hancock. Uh, think about the millions of school children and parents who visit museums, etc., etc. Um, what you, what you, you just told me you don't believe in the big archaeology, but right here you've said there is a big archaeology. That's in quotes for sarcasm. Oh, sorry, you lost me there. Uh, That's because okay. you're you're saying uh, so. So you don't think that um, the millions of school children and and uh, the teaching that the the teaching of archaeology, uh, what archaeology teaches us about the past, forms the basis of the education system about the past. Not people like me, people like you. That forms the basis of the education system about the past. Now you like to present yourself as this small lone voice, but frankly, by comparison with big archaeology, as you call it in your so-called uh, scare quotes, by comparison with that, my outreach is very small, even on Netflix. Ah, oh, God. Is there anything more tedious than geology truther? <laughs> Chris? It's, I know. And, but just like Elor Graham Hancock is a moron again. Like the Elor is just a really unobservant person or who doesn't understand scare quotes or what Flint is saying. Or he's intentionally misrepresenting it in order to make like a, a stupid point that like Flint is... What does he think? Flint is giving the game away that he knows there is a big archaeology apparatus. No, yeah. he's and saying he, he accidentally admitted it on Twitter in scare quotes. Yeah, with with quotes. Why do he put quotes around <laughs> it? Why do he put quotes around it? And you can hear the exasperation in his voice, right? Because what he's saying is education, normal education is kind of refuting of this and so we should be able to take solace to some extent in that but what he's not saying is big archaeology has its tentacles deep in the society and it's strangling poor graham hancock like uh, it's so stupid but it's exactly the same thing that eric did where like well when you said flex it's mm. quite clear, you know, that you may because yeah. because in just for the people that haven't heard it, Mick West mentioned that he likes to flex his mu his muscles, right? Like on these puzzles about UFOs, and Eric was like, "Flex," as in like show your dominance. I think that's so distasteful, right? Eventually, I kind of settled down in a way on this UFO thing because it's so 
interesting in terms of the mathematics, the geometry and the physics, you know, very simple physics, you know, just simple Newtonian stuff, linear algebra and things like that. It's nothing complicated, but it's stuff that I, I used in my previous career. And so I, I kind of enjoy flexing those muscles. And recently I've been enjoying flexing my muscles, programming simulations. Uh, and yeah, I do also enjoy the interactions with people. Who's confused, who needs to be made unconfused, and who is saying that they're seeing something that needs to be followed up and not necessarily having their reputation destroyed because somebody wants to, in your own words, flex. I don't find the flexing fun. And to be- I didn't say flex. <laughs> You did say flex. Did uh, not I, say something about flexing your own. Oh, flexing muscles. my muscles, but it's not yeah. like flex, as in like you know, That's show, where flexing uh, show comes putting, from. flexing. You did say flex. Yes, I know, but uh, I, for me, flexing actually means the same thing as stretching or an okay, exercise. Okay, but right now I just I went mean, through exactly okay. one of these moments where I tried to remember something you'd said, and then you told me that you don't use that as a phrase. And then I happened to be able yes, to but, recall uh, it in the sense, the sense that you meant. I understand. It. No. Yeah. I think you did say it in the original sense from which the, the internet term flex comes from. So I don't think that's okay. even correct. So my point to you is I don't enjoy the feeling in my body right now. So he was like taking the interpretation of like yeah. the online lingo of, yeah. you know, flex on someone, which is so disingenuous. Yeah. And I think what Graham's doing here is equally as disingenuous or he's stupid. It's one of the, one of the <laughs> two. Yeah, yeah, the perennial question, isn't it? I think we've arrived at both. It's both. Yeah, like I think our refrain more, more often these days is that these tactics shouldn't work. Like it shouldn't be this easy for these figures to present themselves one way and just be so transparently doing something else. At least it feels like it ought to be transparent, yet it isn't to Joe Rogan. Yeah, well, one thing I will say here which is slightly to Joe Rogan's credit, is that in this episode, he does display more critical responses to Graham than he's ever demonstrated before. Right? He actually does let Flint give the presentations. He sometimes responds to, you know, Graham's dismissal saying, well, but no, you can't say that, right? Like he is standing as the kind of arbiter in it, but he doesn't just completely dismiss all arguments raised by Flint. He seems to have appreciated that, you know, Flint is there yeah. and is making a good faith effort engaging with Graham. But the main argument that Graham Hancock makes, which is a very similar thing to like Brett Weinstein, is that he, he wants to say it's just a hypothesis, right? That like his idea has not been disproven. We haven't searched, we he, like reference, how much of the desert have we excavated like one percent right so we don't know what's there we haven't excavated all of the ocean and flint table is saying actually we have a whole bunch of techniques that would you know allow us to identify these structures and we have found you know things where we anticipate them to be and so but it, none of that lands right and the other thing alongside that is a constant reference to how things look like this looks man-made Right. Yeah. So, and yeah. listen to this exchange between Graham and Flint, and then I'll show Rogan uh, doing the same thing. So, poor Flint. Flint, do you think nature made that? I see no evidence of it being man-made, if that's what you're saying. You, you, you see no evidence of that being man-made. You see a no. central upright, you see upright surrounding it, you see the outer curve, the inner curve of the outer megalith matching the outer curve of the central megalith. And to you, that's, that's not even interesting. I mean, even the photos you were showing of Yonaguni showed a lot of natural fractures along straight lines. And so I think that it's really easy to confuse what can happen naturally and geologically with something that looks kind of anthropogenic. But this does not look man-made to me. It does not look like anything I've ever seen. Well, that's interesting because I took a geologist diving there, Wolf Witchman. Um, uh, he's very skeptical. He, he was skeptical about Yonaguni, but he did confess after we came up from the at Karama, that there's no way, in his opinion, that this could have been made by, by nature. Yeah, there you go. The argument, one, the argument from incredulity, and two, I spoke to a guy and he had a look at it. And yeah, he what can Flint say in response to that, right? Like, it's that anecdotal reference. And maybe the guy said that, maybe he didn't. Like, but also, you know, the, that, like, that's not how you determine if something is man made, if somebody goes and like, you know, is impressed by how it looks when they're yeah, diving yeah, or whatnot, yeah. like you, I, 
And you yeah. and you you relate their opinion secondhand. We don't know his name. It's just a story, <laughs> something that happened apparently. Yeah, like this isn't how you do geology, right? This isn't how you do anything. And a lot of what Graham Hancock is doing is showing pictures, right? Which look impressive. You know, they do look, you have these straight lines or whatever. And, you know, like what could have made that? That can't be yeah. natural, right? They're, they're set up like this. And it's, it's, it's just... It's so similar to, to, to the ufologist, UFO conspiracy people. It, so much of it relies on, look at this picture. Explain that. Yeah, yeah. Or, or or intelligent design, right? You know, look at the bacteria flagellum. How complex is that? Yeah. You know, look at all the different pieces that are in it. That cannot be natural, can it? Right? Does it look <laughs> natural to you? And just to show how this lands with Joe, because there, there are some times where he's like, maybe that's not man-made, you know, maybe this one is. But here's, you know, him discussing one example with Flint. Right, but we're, we're dealing with completely different parts of the world, correct? Yeah, which is my point that it's not all one culture. Yeah, right. I agree. So this one is fascinating. Look at that one. That that doesn't intrigue you? You don't look at that and go, wow, that really looks man-made? I think it looks really cool, but again, it's, I've seen a but, lot of... But if that if you knew for sure that was man-made, that would, that would, wouldn't that sync up? Like, I... if, if you knew for sure, if this had been dated and everyone knew where this came from and you saw this and this was from an archaeological site that was well-known and established, you would look at that and say, yes, that fits that. If we you, wouldn't, had... you wouldn't look at that if it was in a well-known archaeological site and say, oh, this piece is man-made. All the other stuff is clearly natural. I mean, look, to me, I don't see anything that tells me that it's man-made is all I can I, say. I screwed that up. What yeah. I meant to say is if, I get you, what you're if saying, you looked just... at this, you wouldn't say this is natural. If you, if you looked at this at a, a known archaeological site, I just reversed it, sorry. If you looked at this as a, at a known archaeological site and there was other structures there and then there was this, you would say this is a part of that. You wouldn't say that this is natural. Not necessarily. So there's a site that I worked but with. But look at this right here. I, I get what you're saying. But you know Joe, what I'm saying? Like, like if there was if there was other structures next to that mm -hmm. that were clearly man made, you would assume, I would think, that that would be man made as well. No, that was what I was gonna say. Is there's oftentimes a lot of natural stones alongside archaeological stones at sites. What Flint is trying to impress the Joe is you can't just look at it and use your intuition, right? Like he's he's saying actually. When you go to these sites, you can make mistakes from relying on that, right? You you actually need to date things. And just going by your intuition is wrong. And there's so many parts in this where it's essentially Joe yeah. showing a picture and saying, but but look. It looks, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Like, and, no, the no, the argument just, is always the same, saying, you know, yeah. you, Joe, that's not how we, we do it. And then Graham is yeah. like, you're right, Joe. You know, yes, of course you yeah. can see it, I, you know. and <laughs> Just like, but look at it. <laughs> yeah. It looks, it looks and, like you just cannot. I uh, know. I mean, uh, Joe's trying his best in, in his own way, isn't he? He's just so terrible and credulous, like you said. I mean, He's so you, bad. You, you, you just reminded me of how, like, he's he's often not the worst person in the room, right? Because he has such terrible no. guests on. But you know, when when Tucker Carlson was relating his theory that the Manhattan Project was a cover story for demonic or alien technology that the American government had and wasn't telling anyone, Joe Rogan, <laughs> to his credit, it's a low base was skeptical <laughs> it was like that doesn't sound right <laughs> but man the people he has on my goodness yeah i don't think he's you know that much above it but also matt he has these buttons which people know how to push so one thing is that flint dibble has referenced that graham hancock repeats racist tropes right which is, and the general racist trope around ancient civilizations there's all these indigenous impressive structures all these structures you know oh, in yeah. all these different countries yeah. they were not built by the indigenous people they were no. built by a race of white skin <laughs> advanced people who, that's who really. taught, yeah like and so you know the thing is that european colonialists like these myths right and mm. also a whole bunch of these myths appeared after the colonial powers took control of some area, right? Like uh, the portrayals of certain gods shift or historical figures shift, right? So Flint Devil is pointing out on occasion that like Graham Hancock is repeating these like claims by mm. Victorian racists, right? Yep. However, he referenced this 
by mentioning white supremacy and you know Uh-oh. this mm. is going to That's upset Joe trigger. and mm. Graham Hancock knows how to do this so this is part of his presentation right like about how he's been mistreated and at times Joe was pushing back saying but you know Flint didn't do this to you you know and then got to this way quote reinforce white supremacist ideas that's not yours no that's not a quote it's not in quotation right it was in the other article that's what I'm getting and to. Again, they strip that, indigenous people of their rich heritage and give credit to aliens or white people. Well, in short, the series promotes ideas of race science that are outdated and long debunked. And this is and your own. Say. Right, but this that's is your not own, his quote. This is though. your own article, Flint. Here you are. I'm quoting from that's a quote from your article uh, published in the conversation this sort of race science is outdated and long since debunked especially given the strong links between atlantis and aryans proposed by several nazi archaeologists you are associating me with this and you are attempting to no, get me no i'm asking you to distance yourself from that is but actually what the, i'm trying to do but that's not what you're doing though you're, I, you're associating him with that clearly it's I don't think so. Oh, I do no, you don't think that? Look at the way it's phrased okay. on your article. This sort of race science is outdated and long since debunked, especially given the strong links between Atlantis and Aryans proposed by several Nazi archaeologists. That's like a part of the headline. So you want like, me to show you some tweets I've gotten right. from people that are I fans of Graham Hancock and No, 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 Listen, stop, stop. Don't do that. This is, they're not connected to him. They're just humans. There's a lot of crazy people in the world. This is you. We're talking about you. Yes, but what I'm trying to say is that people misinterpret Graham. There's lots of people on the internet that think that he's talking about a lost white civilization. Right, but this is something that you chose to highlight at the top of the page. No, I did not highlight that at the top of the page. Why is that's, that like that? Uh, that's, that's, he that's, that's did that. From, that's actually near the end of it. That's a quote from the article. <laughs> that's but, near but the that's, end of it. But it, why is it up there like that? I, I put it there. You did it. Oh, yeah. Jesus. I did I'm, not put I'm, that I'm, there I'm like just that. Taking an ex, I'm just taking an okay. extract from Flint's article. Okay. But you Give, did print it. Science man has not been <laughs> truthful with yeah, the con. <laughs> why, why this quote at top of article? Why you highlight and, and then, no, other science man did this. Other science man did this. You try to trick Joe. You know? It's uh, both, uh, you know, like I actually think that it is Graham Hancock is right that Flint is wanting to criticize him. Uh, he's not necessarily saying that Graham Hancock is a white supremacist, but he is drawing a line yeah, connecting yeah, him right to yeah, those. So that yeah. there is a disparagement intended there, but I think a justified one. And mm. I also think that, you know, you can hear Joe being like, no, no, <laughs> no, you cannot say that you are suggesting, you know, and, and it is true that, you know, Graham Hancock uncritically relies on yeah. like racist sources as they suit his narrative. So, you know. Yeah. yeah, and that forms part of his audience too, who are attracted to that particular spiel. And I appreciate that some, you can't take that kind of, whatever you want to call it, guilt by association or speaking into a certain narrative or, you know, your audience, you know, like towering you with some section of your audience. But, you know, given that there's some, validity to those things it's it's and I, I can't believe that whatever bumps or structures in the ground that hancock thinks he's found i doubt that there's much evidence that the supposed ancient peoples who made them had white skin right i don't see how that could be in the geological evidence you know it wouldn't be hard to just you know knock that on the head so you know he's making a fair point yeah, he is. But the main thing is, is that it speaks to that sort of like shift, shift the discussion to one of grievance and, and to one of character and culture war and stuff like that. Whereas uh, once again, this is, this is the wonderful Graham Hancock being maligned by the great powerful woke institutional big geology. It's a, it's a story we've seen before. It actually, I think, is an interesting debate because it's essentially you know, like a modern incarnation of creationism versus evolution with a very well-informed good debater in the form of Flint Devil discussing with an alternative, if you want to put it kindly, somebody with an alternative theory of archaeology or evolution or whatever, right, who also is quite rhetorically powerful in his way. And Rogan gives them the time to go through their independent presentations and Dibble does a very good job of remaining calm 
of focusing things on the science. And I saw from the reaction that there were a lot of people that felt that like Hancock didn't perform very well. Like he essentially was, you know, hand waving. They didn't like the bits about white supremacy or whatever. They thought they looked like a bit of a strange geek, but they did acknowledge that he seemed to be bringing the goods in terms of like scientific representation for, you know, the, his position. And I think it is in some respect, the only place that you're likely to see this kind of thing is on Joe Rogan's podcast. Like, I think this is part of what the original p- appeal of his podcast was, right? You know, that he would kind of create these situations where you have a scientist going up against an alternative archaeologist and um, give them multiple hours to go for the evidence. So I can see, you know, why this would be appealing despite its rather niche nature and despite all the limitations that we're talking about, about Joe being completely scientifically illiterate and Graham engaging in, you know, like uh, various rhetorical and guruish tactics. I still think overall it probably is a net positive that it occurred. And that's mainly to the credit of Flint, who did a very good job. Like, you know, he prepared a lot for it and he he clearly had, you know, strategies and knew everything that was going to be brought up. So that's one positive, I think, that we can take away from it. Yeah, I know, like, you know, Joe Rogan's got a, a very broad audience and not everyone who listens to him is, they're, they're not all the same, right? And um, They're not all cheering on Tucker. <laughs> no, no. Um, so... Yeah, I could see some positives to come out of it. And so good on him, uh, Flint Dibble. Uh, you said we might speak to him, Chris. That, that might be interesting. Oh, yeah. He, he said already that he's up for appearing and discussing all of those things, his appearance on Rogan and the uh, public science communication and archaeology, alternative archaeology. So it'll be fun to talk to him, and we will. We should, we should have him and Mick West on. We have like a support session and just they could... Oh, I thought, yeah, we'll get them to, to be it. <laughs> it's like, which is more annoying, alternative uh, archaeology people or UFO advocates? Like, they, they can bring a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> 